Welcome to the training video on status display. In this video, we will cover how to build and save status display configurations in SDS2 version 7.2. Status display allows the user to create simple to complex settings that can either color or hide items in the model. Status display can be launched from several locations, from the model drop down menu, an icon, shortcut keys, and in review stations from the right click menu. Let us begin by briefly describing the functions of the sections in status display. The priority section. Each priority level can contain one or more conditions. The new button creates a new priority level. The disable checkbox allows the user to disable the conditions that are associated with the currently displayed priority level. The Conditions section. Here is where you will determine on how each condition is to be represented in the model. By using the New or Delete Condition button, conditions can be added or removed from the priority level. The Modify condition section is where you can select and modify the conditions to be used in the currently displayed priority level. We can see by expanding this drop-down list that there are many available conditions. I will now move on to how these sections function. Currently, the default status display is set to have one priority with a failed connection, indicated in the model with a cyan color when any of the conditions below are true, that is, it's a failed member. Let's modify the shown item to a hidden or masked setting. Then in the Modify Condition General Status Options, we will select Sequence. We will leave the is expression and the from range from sequence 1 to sequence 1. We will then hit the apply button. The result will be that the members that are in sequence 1 will be hidden. Using the little yellow filing cabinet icon on the right of the modify condition line, I will remove the highlighted sequence 1 and drag the mouse from sequence 2 to 5 selecting them. And then OK to close the screen. We now see the range is from sequence 2 to sequence 5. Select the apply button. The result will be that only sequence 1 will be displayed in the model. I will set the sequence to go back to sequence 1 to 1 again and change the is expression to is not by selecting the is button. After selecting the apply button we can see the results are the same as the prior operation. After selecting the OK button a prompt will appear asking you to save the new configuration. If you hit OK, the current status display configuration will be overwritten. Note that by hitting the Enter key, you will execute the OK button to save, overwriting the current status configuration. If you look at the status display window, you will see that there is a button to save as your current configuration. We therefore do not necessarily need to have this prompt since we can save our configuration as we need it from the status display and therefore will not risk overriding any pre-configured status displays. In the next operation we will turn off this prompt but before this I will cancel the option in the prompt window to save the current configuration. You will notice that the status display configuration masking every sequence but sequence 1 still remains active. This will remain active until you either change or cancel the status display or you exit the modeling window. On the top of your screen you'll notice a checkbox icon that states status display. If you remove the check the current status display configuration will be turned off. When checked the current status display will be turned on. Let's remove the prompt that appeared after we selected OK to exit out of the status display window. From the drop down I'll select the user options. In the configuration tab I will remove the check from the prompt to save configuration after changes. Running the status display again I'm going to make a modification that would force a save. This time when I hit the OK button you'll notice 
that there won't be any prompt. I will open the status display again and this time using the save as I will save the current configuration with my name. You will notice at the top of the screen in the status display title bar my name will now appear. The buttons on the bottom will perform the following actions. Cancel will turn off the status display. Load will load the selected configuration. Clear will clear all priority levels and conditions in the currently loaded status display. Reset will restore the currently loaded status display configuration. Let's apply the status display configuration. Now that the basics are done, time to dig a bit deeper. I will select the new option in priority level creating a level 2. In the general status options and modify condition section I will select the hold status and change the show color to be orange. There are now two priority levels in this configuration. Using the show all button you can view these priority levels and their respective settings and conditions. In priority level 2 I will check the display other materials in gray option for this priority level. While in stick mode the member color remains. But when I change the member to solid the members that are not affected by the status condition will become gray. Let's save what we have done so far. Time to move to creating multiple conditions for priority levels. I will begin by disabling priority level 1 with all of its conditions. The result is the entire model and members on hold in both sequences 1 and 2. I will change this held member in sequence 2 to solid. Changing to priority level 2, I will select new condition in the condition section. We can see when a new condition is created, the new condition will already be selected for modification. In Modify Conditions General Status Options, I will set the sequence to be Sequence 1, leaving the expression as is. When I hit the Apply button, all the members in Sequence 1 will be orange, and only one held member in Sequence 2 is orange. Why is this? This is due to the modifier or expressions Any, All, or None found in the Show Item As line. It is currently set to Any which means if any of the conditions are true in priority level 2 turn the members to orange. Remember priority level 1 is still disabled. When I change the expression to all this means that all the conditions must be met for the members to be colored or masked. When I hit the apply we see that only the members that are in sequence 1 and the members that are set to hold status will become orange. When none is selected this means that if any of the conditions are true in the model, do not colorize or mask the items in the model. When I apply the status, we see that all the members in sequences other than one are orange. Notice the spandrel beam in sequence two that was indicated as held is not orange. This is because if the member has a held condition set and it will not be orange even though it is not in sequence one. Time to move on to how priority levels function. In priority level 2 I will set the expression to any and I will remove the disable check from priority level 1. When I hit apply only the members in sequence 1 are visible and all the members are orange due to the any condition in priority level 2 being met. When I use the lower button in the priority section this will take the mask condition from priority level 1 and move them into priority level 2, therefore raising the conditions from priority level 2 to become priority level 1. Note that not just the conditions will be moved but also the disable setting will be transferred. When apply is used, the held member in sequence 2 is now visible in orange. This is because the hold status is met and takes priority over the masking condition which is now currently in priority level 2. 
Therefore, two key points to remember about status display is that each priority will contain a single or several conditions that must be met in order to affect the coloring or masking of the items in model. And the higher priority levels, for example 1, will override the lower priority levels, for example 2, 3, and 4. On a final note, I would like to cover custom properties and status display. I will begin by clearing the current configuration and applying the change to the model. When you edit a member and select the properties button, we can see the members custom properties. These are user and or design data created attributes. What you see in the screen are the prompts. These prompts are attached to what design data calls schema entry names. In the modify condition of status display, the values seen are these schema entry names. The schema names should be descriptive enough to match the prompts visible in the property screen. One exception would be the schema entry names for the addendum tabs. These were originally called change orders, so for the addendum schema entry names, the heading is CO. Back in the properties window, Let's take, for example, the section size checkbox in Requested Verification Group in the Engineering tab. In the expanded Member Status Member Custom Property drop-down list, we will see that there are two section size fields, one for Engineer Verified Section Size and one for Request Verify Section Size, the latter being the one I pointed out in the Members Properties window. Remember, the values that you see in the drop-down list are the schema names and not the prompts that you see in the member edit window. When we check the box and hit apply, wait for it, takes a while, we can see the member with the section size verification property is set to cyan. When we edit the member properties, we verify that this is correct. Back in status display, we see next to the requested verify section size an equal sign in the drop down list. When we expand the list, we see is not, less than, less than and equals, greater than, and greater than and equals. When I select the is not and apply, we see that all the other members are selected, but not the one with that property set. This concludes our lesson on status display. To see how you can use status display for selection to run reports or status transfer exports, please view the video on model selection tools.